story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington, face the truth, that is young Joe Chernak's problem. He must come to grips with the fact that his former girlfriend, Rita Jacks, has rejected him completely. And the fact is a hard pill to swallow. What are you so happy about? Rodney Harrington was looking for you. Yeah, what was his problem? I think you know. What did he have to say? He told me that uh, you beat up his brother, and that uh, Rita Jacks isn't your girl anymore, and that you can expect him back. Well, it sounds like you had a very cozy little chat. Against my better judgment, I asked him a few questions. I just wanted to see how deep a hole you dug for yourself. How deep is it, Joe? Hey there. Hey, this town is bad news for me, Stell. I mean, bad news. If I stay around here, I know I'm gonna get myself in a lot of trouble. I never doubted your potential. Hey, I can do without the cracks, okay? What do you need me for, Joey? Hey, Stell, let's get out of here, huh? How about it? Just you and me. I just got back, remember? Yeah. And for what? So you can see the old man staggering around this shack with Mama cleaning up after him? Your father is not your problem. We come from the same home, baby. Yeah, we had the same breaks, too, didn't we? Well, people come from worse homes. They managed to survive. Mm-hmm, like you did. And where'd that leave me when you took the old man's dough and you cut out of here, huh? It gave me a chance to go to college. A minute ago, you were blaming Papa. Now you're blaming me? No, I'm just giving you a few facts. A little truth, as they say. I'm not so sure you'd know the truth if it sat on your lap and licked your face. Well, you want the truth, huh? All right, I'll give it to you, Stell. You see, you're the one that's messed me up worse than anybody. How did you turn that corner? Mama threw you in my teeth every day you were gone. I'd get some rotten mark in some dumb class, and all of a sudden she's reminding me how smart my sister is. I'm nothing. But Stella, there's the one. So while you were balling it up on the West Coast, I was stuck here with nothing and nobody. While I was balling it up on the West Coast, I learned something. Would you care to know what it is? Yeah, go ahead, shoot. I learned that you carry your troubles inside you and you take them with you wherever you go. They snuggle up right alongside of you when you're underneath those waving palms and they swim right alongside of you when you're in that heated pool. So you just better face your problems and solve them right here in Peyton Place. For once in my life, when am I gonna get a break? You make your own breaks! What break? Come on, Stell, I never had a chance. What kind of a chance did you give yourself when you dropped out of high school? Who have you got to blame for that? Or when you stole that car and wrecked it? Who was twisting your arm? Hey, I don't need this, huh? Oh, honey. I don't mean to be hard on you. Listen, you gotta start being honest with yourself. Stop taking it out on the world. Come on, Stell. Let's get out of here, huh? 
you have any money? You figure that I had? Well, you ain't been in any big sweat to get a job. I figure maybe you had a little stashed away. I don't, and if I did, I wouldn't give it to you. Not until I saw some sign that you were going to do something about changing your life instead of just standing around and whining about it. Welcome home. Good to see you again. I'm glad you dropped in. I'm just going to say this one's on the house. Gee, it looks great. So do you. But I'd expect you to have a tan with all that California sun. I worked indoors. Yeah, I know, in a hospital. You're, um... What was that you went out for when you were in college? Biochemistry. How did you hear all about it? Your father gets in here a lot. Oh. I can't imagine him bragging about me. Well, it was kind of like complaining that you didn't write. In a way, I guess that was bragging. Anyway, that's not what's important. What matters is that, that you made something of yourself. You went right ahead and you just, well, Ada, I came in for a drink, not a testimonial. I guess it just gives me a good feeling to know it can happen. Why? You got a daughter. She's a lot like you, Stella. She's got ambition. Keeping bar may be okay for Mom, but she's got bigger dreams. All kids have big dreams. Yeah, but like I said, she's a lot like you. She goes after what she wants. Good for Rita. What does she want, college? I don't know, but if she does, I'll do all I can to help her. I, um... I guess your brother must have mentioned her or you wouldn't remember her name. We were, uh, introduced at the drugstore. But Joe has talked about it. He talks. She's through with him, Stella. I'm not saying anything against Joe. But he's going to have to learn to accept this. Ada, I don't want to talk about it. Somebody's going to have to convince him. Somebody? If he'd listen to anybody. It's not my problem. She's like you, Stella. Sorry? I'm not interested. Well, you're interested in your brother, aren't you? I want to tell you something. He's heading for trouble. Because I'm not going to stand by and see him hurt my kid. You don't stand by. You tell him where he's heading and you head him off. I came in for a drink, that's all. Shaving in the morning, and that's shaving in the e morning and in the evening. Huh? I. You gonna need a lift? What? I say you're gonna need a ride. Over to the Schusters, or Stephen gonna pick you up here. No, he's due here any minute now. Well, I think that's a good thing. I think it's good that you're starting out a, a new life. You should go and be a Dr. Rossi. You say what? I think it'd be much easier to understand if you grew a beard. Yeah, I guess so. Well, it's going to be strange to be back in that house. You mean face to face with the past, huh? No, the ghosts. Yeah, well, ghosts, once confronted, usually turn out to be nothing more than ghosts. And I'm not allowed to be afraid of ghosts, right? Doctor's order. I prescribe Stephen Cord. He's three-dimensional, and ghosts aren't usually allowed to practice law anyway. You know, I've only been out with him twice, and I feel like I already know him. Well, that sounds promising. You like him? Well, I don't know whether I like him, but I like seeing him. See you at the party. Okay.
baby. Well, what are you doing sitting here all by yourself, hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a greeting fit for a man who's come much farther than Boston. <laughs> Somebody looks happy. Somebody is. Huh? And it's called pre-party over-excitement. My friend has been sitting here ever since she heard that uh, Allison was coming. I took your advice and I hired her. I'm glad. Well, I didn't really have very much choice. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to come until quite late. You really look lovely. Thank you. I, uh, I'm all ready. I just have to get into my dress. Do I have time for a drink before I have to get ready? Mm. Come with me. drink. Mm. All ready and waiting for it. How did you manage with Kim underfoot all day long? Not so badly. She, uh, helped Mrs. Chernick <laughs> in the kitchen for a while. And then she helped me to set the buffet. But the minute she heard that Allison was coming, she piled herself on that step and she wouldn't move. Never mind about all that. I've been dying of curiosity. What happened in Boston? I came, I saw, I conquered nothing. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, I carried my little report to Boston, and then I carried it right home again. Mm -hmm. uh, go on. Tell me. Well, I went to the clinic to see Martin Payton, and I uh, ran into a roadblock that calls itself Mrs. Cord. This is Hannah Cord. Cord? Isn't that... Uh... Stephen's mother, right. Oh. Well... Then you didn't leave the report. I'm glad, David. Maybe that was some sort of a warning, a, a sort of an omen. Oh, darling, don't make it sound like black magic. I checked with Peyton's doctor, and it seems that she was acting under his orders. Then what will you do about the report? I'll carry it right back to Boston as soon as I get the okay from Peyton's doctor. Well, David, I... Uh... I'll be right back. Hello, Allison. Come Hello, in. Mrs. Schuster. Thank you. Hours. Hello. Hello. Where are they after? To the library. Go. Oh, uh, Allison, here's the list of books that we talked about on the telephone. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, Mrs. Schuster, I worry about this sweater. It's awfully cold out. Perhaps she should have something heavier on. Oh, all right. Well, why don't you take her upstairs and get her a heavier sweater? All right? Yeah, I'll go with you. I'm going to get ready. 